enterprise status, as I said, there isn't a consistent legal definition that we can sort of just roll out. Uh, and there's no formal registration process, so it's, it's really anyone can call themselves a social enterprise. Um, there have been some attempts to try and regulate this by introducing a social enterprise mark, but it's not an obligation, um, it's optional. But what we mean by social enterprise um, generally is that you must have social or community benefit purposes and you must tr conduct a trade or a business in furtherance of those, um, those community or social purposes. <clears throat> An organisation that's a charity or a CASC could also be a social enterprise. What we're looking for is that trading element uh, for the benefits of the community or social purposes. So delving into legal structures a bit more, um, and you'll probably recognise your structure in, in amongst these. A trust um, can, be, can be charitable, can also be non-charitable, so you could have a trust that is for the benefit of named individuals. But in our context we're talking about trusts that are for a wider uh, pool of beneficiaries. Um, in the context of sports clubs, we're talking about um, how land is held, the land held by the, um, used by the club, so football pitches, uh, pavilions, uh, buildings, uh, golf courses, uh, clubhouses. The governing document um, can vary really, so what determines whether or not there exists a trust will be set out in the governing document. Um, we're looking for something like a trust deed or a declaration of trust. Even a conveyance might say in there that um, this land is given to X and Y to hold on um, trust for um, Regen, Regen Football Club, for example. A will, if some very generous person has left um, a piece of land for their local sports club. Or even a charity commission scheme or department of education scheme. For example, a, a, a school playing field. It doesn't have members, it just has holding trustees. And it's the tr holding trustees that generally make all the decisions, but sometimes they will take direction from the committee, the unincorporated association, um, but only if the, the purposes align. And then, of course, they have personal liability, so if something happens on the land, um, holding trustees could potentially be liable. Unincorporated association, and I think most sports clubs that aren't incorporated will be unincorporated associations. Can be charitable or non-charitable. No um, separate legal personality, as I've mentioned, so can't own land, can't have buildings in its own name. So has holding trustees holding the land under a trust. The governing documents will uh, most likely be the constitution. I might be called something else, might be called rules, but essentially it's the constitution that constitutes the governing document. And usually we'll have members, um, and the members will have certain rights set out in the constitution, uh, the right to attend AGM, uh, to vote in new committee members, and it's then those committee members, um, and we use the phrase trustees um, to describe them, but you know, they could be called governors or um, council members or whatever. It's those in individuals who are entering into the contracts on behalf of the club and they're making sort of the day to day uh, big decisions. They are supervising staff, they are giving direction, and they have personal liability. 